Well, a lot of interest in the start tonight in Adelaide of AFL X. Adelaide tonight, Melbourne tomorrow night, and then in Sydney at Allianz Stadium. <laughs> The Sydney Football Stadium, been the home of Rugby League. We've seen Rugby League Grand Finals there, big Rugby Union games, big soccer games, but for the first time it's going to be an AFL venue for uh, for AFLX. And uh, Ben Hudson, who's going to be in charge of the Lions campaign, is joining us this morning. Ben, good morning to you. Welcome to the program. Morning, men. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah. Looking forward to it? Yeah, I think... Oh, Certainly, uh, if you ask the players, they are. We've had, uh, like all sides this time of year, we've had a very uh, strenuous pre-season and uh, we're looking to take on some uh, opposition for the first time this year. Now, you're involved in Saturday nights around, Robin. You've got um, all the Premiers, Richmond, Western Bulldogs, Greater Western Sydney, Gold Coast, Sydney and, and Brisbane. So, do you have a bit of an advantage in a new competition, a brand new format, that you can sit and watch two nights of football beforehand and work out what these blokes are doing and what some of the tactics they're using are? Yeah, it'll be an interesting concept. Obviously, as a, a tra- during pre-season, we've probably had a crack at it for three or four weeks now as part of a... It's a great conditioning game. Uh, and, uh, yeah, the guys, like any professional sportsman, they pick up the little uh, ins and outs and, and what they can get away with, but it'll be great to get a little bit of a, an advantage and, and see what it's all about when uh, teams have a crack at each other in the next couple of nights. It was interesting. We had Brendan Laid on yesterday from Port Adelaide, and he made the point. He said, look, it is a new game, but... Having said that, a lot of the time for years, for Yonks, when you're doing training, you play these sort of mini-games anyway, so it's just taking it one step forward. Yeah, it is. It's probably just adding a few concepts of, you know, the rectangular game, a bit like basketball, the transition, as soon as you score, the opposition get it straight back. Um, You're right, it's a small-sided game, and it's something teams would have played variations of uh, throughout the years, so... Yeah, it's something that picked up really quickly uh, the, the young Brisbane Lions side. Uh, it'll be interesting. It's it's quick. It doesn't stop. And obviously, the 16 format, it'll be uh, a really good uh, vision on TV and live. Well, yesterday, Ben, you spent a fair bit of time with uh, the, the Brisbane Bullets and the Harlem Globetrotters as well. How did uh, how'd you find <laughs> it? And, and you're talking about basketball. You, are there a lot of skills and strengths um, and sort of training regimes that are similar in, in both games, do you think? Yeah, for sure. And, and if you look at our list, we've probably got up to sort of 10 guys that would have played uh, state league uh, basketball growing up. Uh, so it's certainly something uh, the attributes of both sports are, are certainly correlate well. And, uh, yeah, we've had a pretty good relationship there with the Bullets and yeah, a bit of fun there with the Harlem Globetrotters yesterday. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think uh, it'll be... Uh, in saying that, I don't think there'll be too many six-foot-six boys playing after <laughs> Alex because if you look at it, it's, it's pretty much suited for those small, agile types. But, uh, yeah, it would be interesting to see what other teams bring out. So you're not making a comeback uh, to, to the <laughs> AFLX, mate? Or just going to stick to coaching? Uh, it was quite a laugh. It's probably <laughs> one of the few games or one of the many games that I'm not suited to at about six foot six and over 100 kilos. So, yeah, no, I'll certainly be just sitting on the sidelines uh, just watching. I'm actually, I'm actually looking forward to it because I've sort of done a bit of research and looked at some of the rules and I do like some of the concepts and the rules and the restrictions and the, the amount of players but um, and I do like the fact that you, you can't pass the ball back um, or, or if there's a behind there's no there's no park marks paid on backward kicks except in the 40 meter arc so it's definitely going to be fast paced is do you think it, you're going to sort of learn from each game on, on the weekend and 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 sort of change your, your roster a bit to, for the, the games afterwards? Yeah, I, I think where most teams are sort of going in with sort of 14 players, so you can play 10, 7 on the field, uh, and 3 unlimited interchange. I think tactics, I think all teams will go in with some fairly basic tactics. It'll be interesting how much you can adapt because the ball moves so quickly and it's defined by if you have the ball or not. I think what will become important, and you'll notice over the next couple of nights, is every team, if they don't have the ball, will try and cause some sort of delay. And also when they have the ball, because the game is, what, two 10-minute halves, 
it's just up and back, up and back. And uh, regardless of how much work these guys have done, they do need a little bit of a spell. And, and you'll find teams will own the ball offensively and, and sort of take the time off the clock in, in any way they can, just to get a little bit of breath back. Absolutely. It's been interesting, Ben, just to look uh, across the board at how teams or clubs have picked their sides. And I think you'd have to say, uh, in general terms, they've pride, tried to pick just a couple of experienced players and back it up with some of their good young players. And I suppose the Lions fall into that category. You've picked, uh, what, Mitch Robinson and Daniel Rich will be in the side with a number of your good youngsters. Yeah, I think that's that mix. And uh, as uh, we've probably mentioned here, you get the opportunity to give some of our draftees and guys that probably haven't had that AFL experience just yet to get the chance of travel to Sydney and sort of replicate a game like and also test themselves against AFL competition and sort of give them confidence in where they sit. But at the same time, like you mentioned, Mitch Robinson, who hasn't played a lot of footy with due to injury, and again, uh, Alan Christensen is another one. Yep. They come in and... and Obviously, they're competitive beasts, but they, and they've been unfortunately stuck in rehab for so long that they just want to be able to test themselves against opposition and again go away with some confidence, which they'll then take into the JLT and, and, and season proper. Okay. On, um, ben, was, on, just on that, one thing was there any thought given to including Cam Rayner, the number one draft pick? It definitely was, and uh, it, it was right on the cast and. and I think with those young guys, it's about management and being able to get a really good training load in. And unfortunately, he missed a couple of sessions due to really minor things. It was more so load. So that's where a couple of the younger guys, which we probably would have liked to throw in as well, unfortunately just didn't quite get up. But they're certainly fine and and will do a bulk of training back here and and be right for the next couple of pre-season games. And before we let you go, Ben, um, we, we often talk about players developing and you know the draft and getting these young kids through and their, their learning and development. What what about coaching development? You've you've been at the Lions for some, some time now, and you've you've been the rock, ruck coach, uh, forwards coach, and now you're going to be ruck and midfield. How have, how have you sort of developed, and what what have you learnt so far under Chris Fagan and, and Danny Daly and David Noble? Well, I think that autonomy that, that those guys you mentioned have brought in and uh, that sense of ownership, and they sort of give you that freedom to, to have a crack at things that are sort of above your pay level, so to speak. But yes. at the same time, uh, as your professional development as a coach, and it's certainly something I want to continue with, the opportunity to, to coach a side and be it on a smaller scale AFLX is, is awesome. Uh, Flags, is, he gives you the full responsibility, so... Like all coaches, they tell you, you don't know what it's like until you sit in the main chair. So you'll probably find that throughout the JLT as well. Some other of our assistant coaches will, will get a crack at it. So from that point of view, you, you certainly know uh, yeah, the challenge to, to perform and, and all of the assistant coaches obviously want that aim to, to look after their own side one day. So it's a great opportunity and, and certainly very grateful for it. That it is. And thanks for giving us your time this morning, Ben. Wish you the best of luck, mate. It's new territory for everybody involved in the AFLX, which begins tonight, as we said, in Adelaide, tomorrow night in Melbourne, and then uh, Saturday night in Sydney. Good luck to yourself and the boys. No worries, boys. Have a good day. Good on you. Thanks, Ben.